the Hellenistic world at the time of St. Paul sought life answers in things like philosophy, in magic, and in eclectic religious ideas, strange religious ideas. Athens especially symbolized this church with its markets, its theaters, its wandering philosophers, its altars, and its shrines. Now Paul takes advantage of this reality in an attempt to attract converts to Christ. He was very clever. He began his speech, which we heard today, by acknowledging that those listening were indeed religious people. He mentioned the shrines and the altars that he observed. He specifically referred to, a, to an altar inscribed to an unknown God. He then tells us that he knows this God. It's the God of the universe, the God of creation, he tells us. And he has their attention until he makes reference to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. At that point, he loses most of them. He's gone too far for them. He makes a few converts in Athens, but notice that the New Testament does not contain any letters from Paul to the church there. And Athens was an incredibly important uh, center at that time. The majority of the Athenians were not open to the spirit of truth about which Jesus speaks today in our gospel passage. You see, God's plan takes time and it takes human instruments in order to unfold. We can easily miss God's plan because we're dissatisfied with God's timetable or because we object to God's messengers. That's what happens in Athens. So how do we hear that spirit of truth, God's Holy Spirit, when the image of a dog or a, a tongue of clay isn't enough? If we want to encounter the Holy Spirit, that Spirit will come gently in ways that we can understand. What's important is that we are open and willing to hear, unlike the Athenians that day. They had their preconceived ideas, and they weren't going to change. To begin hearing God's Holy Spirit, we listen to that inner quiet voice that seems to speak when we have questions or worries or confusion. That inner voice of goodness, of consolation, of wisdom is the Spirit's voice. Occasionally, the voice of the Spirit can be heard from a, from a good homily, or a meaningful book, or through advice from a dear friend, or even in the words of a child. We never know, we just never know who is speaking for the Spirit. And maybe a good challenge or a good opportunity for us based on the day in scripture is to listen today, all of us, to listen today for God's Holy Spirit speaking to us. Because remember, Jesus promised it. I promise that it would happen.
in our conscience that we are here in the presence of our God, the God who loves us deeply. Let's bring our needs, the needs of our nation, the needs of our world, to God and the state. For the gift of unity in the church, that God's laws of love and forgiveness may be in our minds and written upon our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in our hearts, our homes, and our world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have asked for our prayers and for those in special need of prayer, that Jesus may restore what is withered in their lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick and suffering, that they may find comfort and healing. We pray. The Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are at home or possibly somewhere else watching Mass this morning, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions of the parish prayer line, the intentions of the parish prayer boxes, and our own special intention. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all who are afflicted with COVID-19 throughout the world, for those who are looking after them, that God may offer comfort, strength, safety, and healing. And for a speedy eradication of the virus, from our world, and as our churches, our countries, our nations open, that we may do so responsibly, and for all who are unemployed as a result of COVID-19, we pray to the Lord, Amen. loving God, we thank you for your many blessings. We bring our needs again to you this morning, some spoken aloud, many private attention. Again, coming to you from deep in our hearts, we ask you to grant what we bring in faith through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. 